going to go through the bones now of the cranium and the face and the important surface features of each bone, starting again with an anterior view of the skull so that we're oriented. Our first bone is the frontal bone. I'm going to zoom in to see the superorbital notches. Here and here. The superorbital notches are the passageways for the superorbital nerves and vessels. Our next surface feature on the frontal bone are the superorbital ridges here and here. This is where your eyebrows are. The coronal suture is a surface feature associated with the frontal bone. We saw the frontal or coronal suture earlier, but here it is again. The final surface feature associated with the frontal bone or the frontal is the frontal sinus. I'm going to change to a different skull to show that. I'm going to change to a sagittal skull. Before I go to the sagittal skull, let me simply point out that the frontal sinus is in this area. Okay, starting with an anterior view to get our bearings. You can see the orbital fossa here. This is a sagittal section of the skull. And the frontal sinus is this space right here. Our next bones are the parietal bones. They are paired bones of the cranium. The only surface feature associated with the parietal bones that you're responsible for is the sagittal suture right here between the two parietal bones. Our next bone is the temporal bone, which is right here. And you have numerous surface features associated with the temporal bone. This is the mastoid process, which is a muscle attachment. This is the squamous portion of the temporal bone, simply the flat part of the bone. This is the zygomatic process of the temporal bone. There's a suture right here where this zygomatic process of the temporal bone articulates with the temporal process of the zygomatic bone. So when the temporal process of the zygomatic bone and the zygomatic process of the temporal bone, temporal bone articulate, they form the zygomatic arch. The external auditory meatus is this opening right here. The mandibular fossa is the area right here. It's uh, the part of the temporal bone that forms the temporomandibular joint, or the TMJ. The mandibular condyle of the mandible, which is this structure, articulates with the mandibular fossa of the temporal bone to form the temporomandibular joint. going to have to turn the skull around a little bit to see the next surface feature. I've threaded the green pipe cleaner through the jugular foramen. The jugular foramen is the passageway for the internal jugular vein. Now in addition to the green pipe cleaner running through the jugular foramen, there's also a pink pipe cleaner running through the carotid canal. The carotid canal is the passageway for the internal carotid artery. Watch carefully as I remove the pipe cleaners and you should be able to actually see the openings. So that's the carotid canal. Here comes the green one out of the jugular foramen. There you see the jugular foramen. I've put the pipe cleaners back in the foramen. Now we're looking at, uh, from the inside. So the green pipe cleaner is coming through the jugular foramen. It therefore represents the internal jugular vein. And the pink pipe cleaner is coming through the carotid canal. It therefore represents the internal carotid artery. Surface feature associated with the temporal bone is the internal auditory meatus or internal auditory canal. The auditory nerve 
exits the petrous portion of the temporal bone through this opening. Now the petrous portion is this ridge right along here of the temporal bone. The suture associated with the temporal bone is the squamosal suture. Now I've turned the skull over to look at the final surface feature on the temporal bone, the styloid processes. The styloid processes look kind of like fangs. Styloid process here and here. The styloid processes anchor the hyoid bone. The hyoid bone looks like this, and it aids in swallowing. The hyoid bone is anchored to the styloid processes via the stylohyoid ligaments. Looking at the temporal bone laterally again, now we're going to look at the surface features on a disarticulated bone. So this is the disarticulated temporal bone, and I'm holding the zygomatic process. The surface features on this disarticulated bone are as follows. This is the mastoid process, the squamous portion. If we rotate the bone, this is the petrous portion, the ridge that we saw earlier on the inside. This opening is the external auditory meatus. This is the mandibular fossa for articulation with the mandibular condyle to form the temporomandibular joint. The jugular foramen cannot be seen in this view because the jugular foramen is actually between the temporal bone and the occipital bone. However, the carotid canal can be seen. Inferior view of the disarticulated temporal bone and the pink pipe cleaner passes through the carotid canal representing the internal carotid artery. Now looking more as it would appear from the inside, inner surface of the squamous portion, internal carotid artery coming out through the carotid canal. You might recognize that. That's the internal auditory meatus. Finally, this structure right here is the styloid process. Next we're going to look at the occipital bone, which is this bone right here. Surface features of the occipital bone include the occipital condyles. The occipital condyles articulate with the superior articulating surfaces of the first cervical vertebra, known as C1, or also known as the atlas. This articulation between the occipital condyles of the occipital bone and the superior articulating surfaces of the atlas form the atlanto-occipital joint. If you'll move your head in the direction that you move it when you say the word yes without actually using words, just head movement, that is the action of the atlanto-occipital joint. The large hole here is called the foramen magnum. Foramen magnum is the passageway for the brain stem as it uh, leaves, leaves the skull. The jugular foramen is associated with the occipital bone as well as the temporal bone because it is within the suture between those bones. So here again, indicated with the green pipe cleaner, is the jugular foramen. This is from the outside. This shows the jugular foramen from the inside. Get your bearings. That's the petrous portion of the temporal bone, internal auditory meatus, jugular foramen, foramen magnum.